Hey there, and happy April to you. Gosh, April showers bring May flowers. So gosh, we're hoping for some nice flowers come May, although I did see a few out on my morning walk even this morning. Well, welcome. Let me share my other screen. Hang on just one second here. Get this up on screen. Uh, ah, there we go. Oh, maybe I can be a little bit larger. So gosh, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very, very important tool uh, that we have. Let me just reconnect my little remote here, oh, then that will help. Maybe you'll have a little bit uh, better audio here. Let's just uh, uh, check my audio one second, make sure we're on the right mic. Uh, yes, there we go, excellent. All right, and plug my remote back in. Great, everything should work fine now. Well, you know, when we think about presenting ourselves and we think about the challenge of representing our brand, you know, there's a lot to think about. You know, LinkedIn is the place, in, at least in the modern world, where you build your professional network. But it has to be much more than that. To me, it's also this deep, deep understanding that, you know, that's the place uh, for my sales brochure. If I think about a resume, and in, in my view, and everything I'm teaching is certainly my opinion, a resume, in my view, has to be a single sheet of paper, really in all cases, or we don't really know how to edit our story. But when we move that story to LinkedIn, we have a wealth of other potential. We have much more real estate. We really have to turn it into this concept of a three-dimensional sales brochure representing our product. And no matter what we think, we are a product that has to be positioned and marketed and sold. So it's really about moving our brand into the digital world. And yes, today is all about LinkedIn, but we're going to mention Twitter, probably Instagram, a few others as well, um, because it's all part of social media. And in spite of all the negative things that may surround social media right now, what? why does social media still matter? Or why does it matter in the first place? Um, well, there's, there's so many things uh, that are involved in social media, and I don't have to read all these up here. You can see them up here. Most important, really, is if we do our sharing correctly, our social media sharing correctly. And by the way, there's a great part two to this lecture coming up on Tuesday. That's a Tuesday, this next Tuesday, 5 p.m. That's called Career Evolution, part two to my LinkedIn lecture. Once you build out your LinkedIn profile to be this real three-dimensional sales brochure all about you, now how do you use it as a selling tool? How do you put together the marketing campaign? Come back Tuesday for all of that. But if you are effectively using the profile and sharing properly, look at the second one from the bottom here. This is how you stay on the top of people's minds across your industry, across companies, across everything, even those folks that you seemingly have no day-to-day -day contact with, but they're very aware of you with a proper social media sharing plan. Now, of course, we want you to be capable. We want you to be qualified for your field, all of those things. But also, please don't forget why you are interesting and what makes you tick. So let's take a little <laughs> side trip into my Instagram account. Yes, we are here to talk about LinkedIn, but Instagram, a lot of people will use two or three platforms really for their professional life. And Instagram is one of those that I use. And yet you see everything coming up on screen, which is also on my Instagram. There's nothing here about what I do professionally. So why is it here? The only two reasons you ever get hired, two of them. Number one is chemistry above all other things. Number two is confidence in you about all things uh, beyond chemistry. And that's assuming, of course, you're capable, qualified, all of those things. Uh, so why is all this stuff on my Instagram? And why is John's Instagram one of the drop down menus on his website, which seems to indicate importance? Because of the why are you interesting and what makes you tick? So what you see, what you've already seen is me hiking up the Hudson Valley or me climbing Half Dome out in Yosemite or or the, this latest round of pictures you just saw was me almost, literally almost dying in the desert uh, a year and a half ago, just before the pandemic hit. Uh, late August, I'm out in the California desert at 108 degree heat. Uh, all the advice said, absolutely don't do this in July and August, but I was only there for that day. That was my opportunity to do this dream trip and I did it, uh, but I also made an error. Once we get up to the plateau, up in the sunlight at 108 degrees, made a wrong turn, which added two extra miles in the sunlight. And uh, that put us in a very dangerous uh, place that almost didn't escape from. So glad that that we did. So that's how I'm using my Instagram. A lot of creative people will use it to uh, put in, uh, 
things that, that maybe feed their creativity without being the literal interpretation of their career. Think about how you might want to use various different platforms, primarily thinking about LinkedIn, but carrying a little bit of your story to other platforms. Small changes change perception, and those small changes can help you outmaneuver the competitor. Now, as I give you a lot to think about today, and let me get a little bit of my noontime coffee here. I'm gonna give you so many directions, so many things to think about. You know, you'll forget that your job is to think for yourself. Don't let somebody else think for yourself. You need to take control of the discussion, at least in my view. How you begin to take control of that discussion and how you begin to influence others is with a really thorough and proper use of your LinkedIn profile as a brochure and also a selling uh, tool, a marketing tool for yourself and your, for your career. The information is the new currency. The more information we have access to, more likely we are to be able to leverage it to our benefit. John Krant, author, career coach, and speaker, if you haven't seen me before. Resume and LinkedIn guru as well. Uh, so in case your resume or your career brand, your LinkedIn profile needs a professional uh, touch, needs some help elevating your brand, I think you know where to find me. Packages are right over my website, right under the services tab. If you need to talk beforehand, just reach out by email and we can set up a time to chat. A lot of the ideas are in my book. It's a pretty good book. Uh, library always has copies, uh, uh, usually on hold, due back on loan type locations. Of course, I always have those as well around my website and up on Amazon too. A couple of the resources, then we'll dive right in. Homepage, selfrecruiter.com, halfway down the page. Full LinkedIn lectures right there, both with myself and the slides. Make myself large, the slides large. Use it really as a start and stop tutorial while you're really rebuilding your own LinkedIn profile. Then over on my LinkedIn itself, you can click on the articles and you can get to a few articles that'll help you avoid the biggest mistake in job search. That's really wasting your time. Time mismanagement. Time is the only resource you have in job search and, and most job seekers waste 50% of it. So come back to my supercharging your job search, which is coming up. I have a number of the April dates up on my website now. Go take a look. That will help you uh, stay focused. How your resume doesn't become a resume roadkill course and uh, overall a few keys to supercharging the job search. So back to the idea, don't let somebody think for yourself. Uh, LinkedIn really, it's this de facto social networking website for our work life, but it's a few other things. It's also this uh, communications, research, marketing, advertising platform. <laughs> of course, business person's gonna think of LinkedIn that way automatically, but you need to think of LinkedIn this way automatically. You have a career brand that has to be uh, lift it, positioned, lit just the right way, spotlight it, and sold forevermore. So you have to begin to think of some of these aspects of LinkedIn as you push your career message, as you push your story out there. And here's my numbers from last month. Last month, 11,836 guys. Three levels out, that is a pool better than 21 million people if I can just think about it and how I'm going to use that as part of my personal branding, not only to position myself as capable, qualified, interchangeable, not just that, or you get paid less, that plus also unique, special difference, something that helps me step out of line just from the ordinary competitors. This is going to require likely a, a strong paradigm shift in your storytelling process. You, you, you've likely told your story for so long, you're so emotionally close to it, very difficult to see a new way of telling your story. That is still true and still a new way. Um, don't forget, if you need a little help, a lot of people do, you know exactly where to find me. So we're looking at right now, we're looking at the three level network on LinkedIn. They don't talk about this as much anymore, but gosh, you need to think about it. Every time you connect with someone, no matter what they do to their settings, the two layers behind them come into your searchable pool forever. You get a three level network. So I can see better than 21 million people's information, every stitch of their information. How could I influence them and how can I utilize that information? Now in the interview itself, it's our job to teach them how to select us. That, that's some of the way that I can use that information I can extract, figuring out how to teach certain people that I'm just the right one. But I can also understand how to sell myself looking at some of my competitors. So let's just clarify resume LinkedIn here. In my view, resume has to be a single sheet of paper. It is about catching or piquing the interest, catching their attention. 
opposite side of that spectrum really is LinkedIn's job in my view, which is really about closing the deal in their mind about you as the very, very best individual that's there. Another way to think of it, resume essence and value of your career on a single sheet of paper. LinkedIn, three-dimensional sales brochure, all about you naturally driving the reader to one singular conclusion. My gosh, if I add this person to the project, add this person for the challenge, hire this person for my team, best business decision I'm going to make today. Now, before we exclusively go to the LinkedIn side, let's just refer back to the resume. Top of the resume, we have contact information. Big believer, we have to have a single line of that with the two things we really want them to do on the outsides. Notice here, uh, the very first thing on the left is the LinkedIn profile address where they can click and get to my sales brochure right away. Far right, and in the Western world, we read left to right. Easiest to get to is the far right. There's my cell phone number. If you're holding my resume, I expect you to be convinced. Pick up the phone and call me. If not quite convinced, not quite convinced, click on the other easiest thing to get to, to the sales brochure. And suddenly, you realize how you take control of the sales process about you inside of their head. But you're going to have to understand your story. Just had a little bit of bite to eat right beforehand. So, gosh, we need a little of that now and then. So, let's see if this is going to focus or I'm going to stay out of focus. Please come back into focus. It doesn't like me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a sensor problem. Okay. So, yes, be capable and qualified. Um, but that's not really the story. You do have to be that, and that story has to be there, but that's not the compelling piece. So why are you interesting? What makes you tick? Which could have something to do with your professional life, may have nothing to do with your professional life. Well, pandemic year, and we're going into year two, and we've got all these variants out there, and some of the vaccines don't cover some of the variants. So welcome to year two of working from home. <laughs> I know there's a lot of companies that are acting like they're trying to go back and everything else. We have a little more time. Uh, you're going to have to convince people you can effectively work remotely. I've never worked remotely. Okay, I get it. You see some of what's here. We have to think about these things. We have to worry about these things. But you probably have some sort of offsite experience, whether it is that or speaking, interacting. You just may have to reframe your story in a slightly different way. Now, I want to pull this center stage here as I talk about this. I want not to be a distraction as we're thinking about. Uh, to me, job search plan, now, the, the mistake people make is they will sit and, and sit on the internet looking at job postings all day long and they think that's job search. But you know what? 50% of all job postings you see are not real in the first place because those advertising spots were sold up to one year ago and they expire. And they have no idea what they were going to hire six months or up to a year ago, but they have to use up those postings. Ends up with half of them not being real, not ready to really act upon them. Why don't we reverse all of our job search planning and start with the organizations? Where are the organizations I'm dying to work for? Oh my gosh, I'm dying to work there. I'm dying to work there. Devise the steps needed. I mean, it's not possible, but oh, if it was, if it was, how do we work backwards? Sun, moon, stars, how do we figure out the steps? Well, of course, Discovering the decision makers. I'm going to teach you that right in today's lecture. No, no surprise there. That's easy. Hmm. What's your title? Decision maker. You know what their job is? To object to you. <laughs> your job is to, is to be excited when they object to you because now you have a platform to speak where you can overcome those objections, get the meeting, dazzle them, create the job, whatever we might think. That to me is real job search. And we have to think more in terms of that so we don't get kind of left behind. So please do keep that in mind as we talk through the rest of today. Networking, incredibly important, really interacting with other folks. But really for that to be effective today, I mean, traditional networking, here it is. Run down this list, we're through it so quickly and we go, thank goodness, Ugh, I hate networking. Yeah, I get it, I get it. But that's mostly because you don't really understand networking. When you go and network, once again, after pandemic, when we can do it in person, you know, that is about being the most interested person in the room. What are you here today? Oh, what do you, how did you get into that? Now, out of curiosity, where'd you work before there? Oh, what was it like over there? Two, three, four innocuous questions. The whole goal is to 
lure them up onto the soapbox and then quit interrupting them. Let them speak and let them disclose information to you. Be the most interested person in the room. And then occasionally at the end, you'll get a chance to pitch why you are also interesting, hopefully in about 25 seconds or less, so it can be memorable. Now, networking, we'd like to just get in the room, exchange things, but you know, it's really not that easy. This is kind of a rut we get stuck in and we have to really have to find a way out of this rut leaves us in some very unhappy places that emotionally um, kind of wreck our job search and make us unready for that next interview uh, when we do land it. I want you to simply change some of the rules. These are rules you never agreed to in the first place. And let's do things more unusually, unconventionally, in, in more unexpected ways where these light bulb moments go off as uh, uh, clarity just happens as those dots get connected. So first question in really attacking LinkedIn and think about what we're going to do is, well, whom should I network with? Or a better way to say it is, whom should I connect with this? Here's the answer. Everyone. Why not quit having a filter? I don't care if you're in India, Russia, China. I don't care if you're in janitorial services. It matters because it's not about you. It's about those two or three uh, levels of network behind you that I'm going to own forever. So think about this. Don't get distracted. Every single person on this planet, if I could be connected to them, is a great connection. So let's think about all these places that we might have a, a chance to network and connect with people. Business cards. Let's uh, start conversations that, that open up uh, uh, interesting discussion. And it's going to give you a chance to position and sell yourself, exchange business cards, begin to expand your network and link with as many people as possible, taking advantage of this information as the new currency. Now, let me show you two techniques. Uh, hang on, I'll stay up, off on screen for this one just to, to help this be a little bit clearer. This is a one forward, one back technique. I use this every single day as a recruiter. Uh, it's really as simple as why don't I go in and search LinkedIn, find people that are in some way, some shape, somehow, just like me. And now those people, oh, I didn't mean to go that fast. Let's see if we could just go back there one second here. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get back one. Oh, there we go. One back, one forward. Here comes again. So my goal here is to think about, uh, I have to find some way where the name. So... I could go in and say, well, I used to be a Coca-Cola quality manager. Well, until yesterday, uh, let me go find the people that also used to be Coca-Cola quality managers, even on the free version of LinkedIn, simply a toggle choice. And now collect up the people that made one job move forward. It's a brainstorming technique. Collect them all together. I look at their one backs, one forwards. What this technique will do is help you produce a list of 30 statistically perfect companies that you can go work for tomorrow. The only unknown here, by the way, is, is there an opening? Now, when you do this, if you are the Coca-Cola quality manager or used to be, first thing that's gonna happen is your heart's gonna break because you're gonna go, oh, 7 Up, Pepsi Cola, RC Cola, John, I could have written that list myself. Well, yes, <laughs> that part of the list you should have written yourself. And then you'll see all these food and beverage companies you've never heard of, there's like a million of them. My gosh, everyone's statistically perfect to hire you. Now, this one's a little more complex. Uh, it is a one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, forward technique. We're trying not to reinvent the wheel here. So I have an actual example to show you here. I had someone from Atlanta call me up and said, hey, I, I think I need a career coach. I think I don't have a career. I'm like, oh, <laughs> a little harsh. Send me your stuff. Let's take a look. And you know what? She was three, four years out of school, done a little of this, a little of that, a little of the other thing. Now she's managing a health club. And by the way, nothing wrong with managing a health club but it's not what she wants to do. I, I don't know how to find a career. I said, oh, I have an idea, brainstorming. I said, well, you're, you're, you're just in the workforce. No, 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 I've been working three years. I'm like, okay, well, welcome. <laughs> I see your asset, your real asset as your education. Let's go back to that and let's go find people that had the same three, four, five years as you and let's go see what they did with that asset. So in this example right here, uh, my client went to call. Clark Atlanta University, all these people went to Clark Atlanta University. My client also studied mass media. All these folks studied mass media. And at the time I originally did this search, they were all three, four, five years out of school. 
And it doesn't matter where they're located. It's brainstorming. What what titles do you like? Oh, events. Oh, oh yeah, I'd like to work at events. Oh, events at Warner Brothers. Oh, that sounds so good to me too. Uh, oh, I'd love to be a membership director. Membership director. Oh, recruiter. Recruiter, I'd like to help people. I said, well, we'll come back to that one. Uh, Trish here, membership director at this nonprofit, Chamber of Commerce. How'd she do it? What, you, what do you think her first job was? Membership associate. And her second job? Membership manager. And voila, three steps in, she's membership director. Here's my client over on the right, Tahita. Didn't even know what she's looking for. She's looking for a nonprofit or foundation. Lots of those around Atlanta. I don't know what role. It's a membership, membership services role. I don't even know what that is. I don't either. But apparently, they're going to love your background. Let's go sell it. And you know what? She finds herself on the first step of her three step into her career goal. Now, but up, tell, telling this story a long time, so I have to update it. She's moved up to manager of member services and database, and finally up to director of membership operations. The entire career in one look. Perception is reality. We have to sit and think about how our product is to be received, how it should be uh, positioned on the store shelf what kind of lighting it should have, everything that could elevate it, small changes change perception. And we have a lot that we can do right within LinkedIn to make it work. I just want to show you a few shares. Uh, this should help you just a little bit here. Uh, here. I'll come back up on the screen a little small. Now, these shares are from a lot of my different events here. They were doing a, a group shot, so I, I shared that. Uh, running out the door to present one of my lectures, so of course I, I shared a link to that. I was doing my online boot camp a couple of years ago and someone took a, a, a live shot of that and of course shared that up at WHCR Voice of Harlem Radio Studios and uh, uh, three, four, five times now, a lot, a lot of fun time, six to eight in the morning drive time. I didn't make the picture, but of course my coffee and my book did and, and of course shared that. All of these things, they shape and change perception. That's what you have to be thinking about or whether it's articles you might put over on your LinkedIn, which change perception and give you a voice. You know, that that's really almost like controlling every word of the interview in advance if you post those articles. Or even resharing somebody else's content. Here, the radio show host shared all the authors he had on and voila, he shared my content. That's a little bit of a piggybacking. And here, running up to another lecture, I can't share the same darn photo all the time, looking for another one and, and grabbed this photo that I really didn't like that somebody in the front audience uh, took two hours into a lecture or an hour and a half. I'm, I'm, I'm greasy. I'm laughing. I'm really embarrassed to tears about my gigantic email signature that I'm showing off. Don't be afraid to break your brand. Look at this. Breaking my brand and suddenly I got a ridiculous 1,500 views. So even though I exert a lot of branding control, don't be afraid to also on occasion be a human being. Now, success is almost always determined by the amount of preparation you're going to put in. I want you to absorb what's about to float across your screen here in just a moment here, because branding your career, yes, we're talking about LinkedIn, but if you'd like to be employed, probably also need to talk about Twitter. I hope you notice those two profiles between LinkedIn and Twitter, and you'll find the same on Facebook, Instagram, other places for me. They don't look identical, but they certainly work together. And then I let my content flow across all the platforms. So that over time, really quickly, you realize how seeing this stuff over and over with a little message from you, I mean, it has such an effect on pe how people think of you. Imagine you're letting people look over your shoulder to see what you're reading, doing, sharing, attending. That, of course, is all the individual stuff that's all perfect and right for your career. How will that shift the brand about you? How will that change how people might think about you. These are all things that you have to really consider very, very strongly. Now you have a lot of content to think about. If you've, if you've taken the resume renovation lecture, you know that I, I recommend a, about a 90 minute deep dive self interrogation interview. Your job is to uncover eight, nine pages of background, all the stuff you probably tossed away and forgotten over the years because you, you just got stuck in one rut of telling your story the same way. Go back and discover that content and then filter it through a singular lens question. Why is it going to be the best business decision they're going to make today if they choose to hire you? That's going to help you make sure the story is focused on all of these things that are the real attention getters. Now let's go over to LinkedIn itself and we're going to talk to you about that. Now, LinkedIn, 
Uh, when others look at you, what do they what do they see about you? Uh, or when you look at others. So I'm a big believer in when we do this for our job search, uh, the method is build out a great profile. Now you have a selling brochure. Make that list of companies, 30 companies. I hope you stack rank them to put the ones that are important up top. And then, you know what? For the top company, which may be ABC company, I'm going to open 25 to 30 profiles as part of the first step of marketing myself to that company. You're going to show up just like these people up on screen. This is what is behind the firewall of the company. Those 25 to 30 people are teased by LinkedIn. Oh, six, six people looked at you. Who, who's looked at me? If you haven't looked at it before, you certainly will now. Once you look at it, you, you can't stop looking at it. So how, what, what am I going to do here? Hmm. Uh, how would you like to present yourself? How would you like to look? Would you like to, to look like these folks at the bottom? I don't even know why they're here. It doesn't make sense. Really, let's be clear. There's no purpose to privacy on LinkedIn. This is your cultivated, curated garden of your career story where you quite literally control every single word about yourself. Why would that ever be private? Now, Jonathan here, I'm not sure why we would look here either, but there's some lessons to learn here. First off, I can tell you, Jonathan does not work in a glamour or fashion industry. Therefore, the glam shot uh, or, or a little bit of nod to the glam shot really doesn't work. Also, if you're an owner or founder, oh my gosh, I hope you're not looking for a job. <laughs> we do not hire owners or founders. You know why? We can't tell them what to do. They won't listen to us. They have their own ideas. Uh, but you know what? You may have been an owner or founder and you'd like to be hired. Well, then let's get out of our own way and change that title to principal. Has all of the same benefit, none of the baggage. That's the person I can give the responsibility to, but I can also manage. They'll, they'll listen to my direction, everything else. Now, Deborah here, gosh, finally, I have some good energy. I can imagine working with this person during a tough week on a tough project. Oh my gosh, textiles, lighting, fashion, interiors. I have a focus. I have a focus, people. There it is. Hmm. And now I wonder what Deborah does within textiles, lighting, fashion, interiors. I mean, answering the phones or designing the fabric or setting the lighting. I, I really don't get that part of it. Handling the clients. I, so a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Oh, Brad here, corporate affairs and communications, global reputation management, government relations, crisis comms. Oh, I, look, I can contact that guy. Looks the part too. Really, really important. That's your product shot. This is not about a headshot that looks nice. Oh, I hope your headshot looks nice. This is about looking like the product that you present yourself as. Your profile is the world right at your window. You have to think about, well, how are things going to shift if the world's right at my window? Why would I, how would my story be different? Well, how are you interesting? What makes you tick? What are you going to put in that window that will draw attention? So let's go over to my profile here and I'm going to teach you a few things. First impressions are incredibly important. Notice that, yes, I'm using a banner image. You do not have to be in your banner image. I'm in my banner image because I can get these shots quite frequently. Headshot, uh, very important there as well. Just know this is your main product shot. So we're looking for intangibles, energy, enthusiasm, drive, passion, presence. Beyond everything else, of course, it has to be something that they can imagine this is the person. This is the person I can see doing this job. Right below our, our picture, also for that first impression, is, is really about a 100, 200 word mini resume. That's your headline. Really, that headline is not out to your, well, in my case, 500 plus connections, which you know is 11,000, really. It's not out to my 11,000 connections. A little bit, a little bit, but those people know who I am. This is out to the millions of people in my network who have no clue who I am. So about the worst or least you can do here is put your current or last employer in title. Really? That's the most interesting thing about you? I really doubt it. So what do I use this space for? Author and career coach, resume, LinkedIn, career branding guru, featured speaker at the New York Public Library, Department of Labor, CUNY, and many others. Oh, quoted in, and seen in the Wall Street Journal, CNN, Forbes, uh, Essence Magazine. Oh, so unlikely. And, and my gosh, you can contact that person. Notice also 500 plus connections, assuring them that yes, in fact, I am a mover and shaker. Uh, even small things like 
what shows in the about section is still eye catching because the about section is truncated until you open it, but it has to be eye catching. So they open it. Of course, banner image, we talked about that and think about uh, the profile image as well and how these two should relate. Uh, the banner image should not distract them from your uh, profile shot. It should add focus somehow to the profile shot. Make sure you put a nice headline, which is a nice mini marketing message all about you to essentially introduce you to all uh, those folks that really don't know you. When you go in, you can click on any of the blue pencils to do some editing. And it's a lot of trial and error. It's trying the banner a different way, seeing it different directions, different styles, what's going to really produce the effect that I'd like. As you work down the profile, let me just get a little sip of coffee here. As you work down the profile here, um, first thing I'd like you to see here or, or, or have a realization about is there's, other than that quotation at the top, which is a quote, there's no sentence structure whatsoever. Extra clarity. If I'm reinventing a client's resume or LinkedIn profile, there is not a single sentence anywhere. Why would I put a sentence in those spaces, be it the resume or the LinkedIn profile, in a world where no one will read? That's the world we live in today. No one will read anything. So notice I white space, incredibly important to how things are absorbed. Even this, this media hit list, oh, I could have put this in in a very much more succinct way. Could have, what would that have taken? An extra second or two or three of processing brain power? There is no extra second two or three. They see it in the brain, see it in the brain. My summary section, my about section is so long. It's three screens long. You got about 2000 characters of space. To me, this is where you make the entire case, the pitch. Don't let them simply go employer title, employer title, employer title, education. Here's what I think of you. Tell them how to think of you with proper use of the about section. Collect together those things that make you interesting, different, no matter what area of the background they come from. You need to uh, space them out and parse them out uh, so they can be absorbed. Group them in ways. Notice here, featured speaker at, of course, New York Public Library Department of Labor. And then I immediately list eight more organizations. <laughs> I can't just list eight organizations as a block. Oh, big block of text. Oh, I hope there's pictures. Oh well, my gosh, there are pictures further on down. Don't miss NYC Service or Rainbow Push Wall Street Project or Goldman Sachs or Harvard Business School Club of New York City. Can't have them miss that stuff. That's why those are spaced out so the brain can grab them. Still more room left in my about section. So I, I put in a number of the titles that I speak about. I roll the dice on an entire paragraph out of my book, put quotes around it to make it really friendly, name afterward. Of course, I then tell them about my full services, my resume and LinkedIn reinvention process, all of that. I begin to attach visuals, your summary section, individual jobs. It can all take visual elements. Those are images, PowerPoint files, PDF files, uh, 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 video streams off YouTube and Vimeo. You can upload videos directly. Lots of different ways to potentially get content in there about you that tell a story. Now, this white box does not exist on a lot of people's profiles. You cannot create this box. This box instantly appears if you are sharing. And if you have not shared in the last 90 days, this just disappears. And it probably looks like you may have even passed away or are no longer on this earth because obviously no one's paying attention to your LinkedIn profile. This is the snapshot. This is the place where you're letting them look over your shoulder to see what you're reading, doing, sharing, attending. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Fill this box with articles, books, events, all somehow tangentially or directly connected to your field with a few words of comment, three, four, five words of opinion. So it sticks to you and a link. Visual elements, of course, come in right from where, wherever you shared it from automatically. Don't have to worry about that. Now, as you get to the normal resume part of the LinkedIn profile, just absorb what I said earlier. There's no sentence structure. There's no, well, that doesn't look like a resume. Well, why would you have it look like a resume? Do those work very well for most folks? No. <laughs> so, mm, okay. Again, parse parse and bracket out the information in ways that make sense for you. In fact, let's just look at a little bit more expanded text. No sentence structure here. It clearly communicates uh, without exception. Space out your verbiage, figure out how you're going to group things for simplification so they can be absorbed nicely. Maybe when we're all done, we go back and we add just a little bit of all caps. You know, if I, if I add a little bit of all caps, I'm very likely to keep reading a lot of material. 
uh, too many all caps, not very likely to read very much. No all caps, again, not very likely to read very much. Find the balance that essentially takes the work away so they can just look at it, feel like they absorb it. Look at it, feel like they absorb it. You can borrow some of the setup from my profile itself, adapt the content to, to represent your story. And you have a pretty good layout right there. Of course, here's a few more two line bullets as we go a little bit further down so you can get a sense of how I might use those. If you need a keyword block, and most do not, if you need a keyword block, this is how you do it. There is no special spot for a keyword block. Um, by the way, just because there's no spot, please do not put it in the summary section. The keyword block is for a machine, not a human being. So don't put it up there. <laughs> Skip a few spaces anywhere in one of your profiles. Skip a few spaces, put keywords, colon, run them all together. There, it's perfect. The machine will not miss these. Uh, now, I don't know if you've looked closely at mine during this time that I'm sitting here and talking to you. But if you were, you'd see Stephen Covey, Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins. Never quite know how they're going to search him. Tory Johnson, 5 O'Clock Club, 92nd Street Y. All these things I have absolutely nothing to do with. <laughs> Why are they here? Well, because I think like a detective. Those are things that someone could search to find a person like John. But you don't really know John. You're not going to find John. I can't get those elements into my story organically. But I can get those elements into a keyword block. I sure hope you've connected some dots there. If there are certain companies you are dying to work for, certain people you are dying to come up next to in the search results, oh my gosh, all those things could go into a keyword block. And boy, that would really help control the reaction. In setting up your different sections, it is trial and error. That is the way you get to it. When I build a LinkedIn profile for one of my clients, it probably takes at least 40 or 50 separate little uploads and tweaks over and over, hours of work. People think, oh, it's just easy. I'm like, well, it is if you like something non effective. If you'd like to have something effective, it takes a lot of trial and error and thinking about absorption and thinking about taking away the work for people that really don't want to read. Of course, then I attach more visual, visual elements down where it is appropriate down the profile. A little earlier in the background, I want to highlight a couple different things. BP over the Hunter Office Recruiting System, uh, really. Here where I say national recruiting firm and I list out all of our, our uh, you know, manufacturing, engineering, supply chain, logistics, chemical, energy. Just a clever way to get more keywords in there, really. You can also imagine from my storytelling technique, if you were in any one of those industries and you needed help elevating your resume or lifting your brand on LinkedIn, needed a really good career coach, guess who would come right up based on how I told the story? If there's a way for you to use this technique to help your efforts you understand it now. This would be a terrible technique to use on the resume. In my view, you have a single sheet of paper. You need to use that real estate to talk about your value, not to, to throw a little sugar at your company. But here we're, we're not handcuffed by the real estate. I can throw a little sugar, a little spotlight at my company, and some of that gets reflected back to me. Really, really important. Now, I want to teach you this from earlier. This is earlier in the career. Associated clients, now that could get you in trouble. Uh, careful of those trade secret agreements, careful of the non-disclosure agreements. I had the right to share every single one of these clients that I worked with. I shared every single one of these clients that I worked with. And again, you think if you worked for any one of these, these software clients that are out there, my gosh, if you needed help with your resume, LinkedIn profile, coaching, guess who would come right up based on how I told that story. Now look what's just below that. Would you like Endless new connections forever. Invite me. All invites accepted. Open networker and lion. This is how you get to 501 connections. Simply go to the unified search box at the top of the page. Take each one of these phrases. Stick them in quotes one at a time. Boom. Here's all the people with that in their profile. Invite me. Invite me. No consideration. Just invite me. I won't even filter you. Just invite me. All invites accepted. Open networker right here. Lion. Yeah, on Lion, you're going to get a few that don't belong. I work at Food Lion. I'm, I'm on the Lion team of the real estate company. Yeah, a few that don't belong. Most of them are very high volume networkers, by the way. If you went in and invited all those people today, by the way, I don't care if you had zero connections today. It's Thursday today. If you went in and did it today, by Tuesday's lecture, you are at 501 connections, labeled 500 plus. You look like a mover, 
shaker finger on that pulse. Publications module, of course, I use it for my book. I have a few different articles in there, including the Essence Magazine article. You may not have the book, the articles, those kinds of things, but anybody could write the three, four, five articles that somehow surround what you do professionally. No one wants to actually read, so page, page and a half, keep it short, succinct, as if you're controlling every word of the interview in advance, giving wise advice, maybe even from this angle. If I, if I came to you and said, hey, could you talk to my kid? Uh, they'd they'd kind of like to come down the same track as you. Could you give me some pearls of wisdom, some advice? Yeah, wise mentoring tone. That's that's probably about the right approach. You could stick those up on any free blog. There's a million of those things. Connect it here to the publications module and suddenly you have another module on the profile to position and sell you. Now, if you volunteer, now I always like to do this with an in-person audience. I go, oh, anybody volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. And someone will go, I volunteer. Oh, and I, I'm so interested until I'm like, mm, I'm so not interested. Because for a moment there, I, I, I thought it was real. And then I realized, oh, it's just volunteer work. I don't know why we're so dismissive. So for myself, nor my clients, and by the way, this is volunteering here today. <laughs> There's no payment here for this. Um, for myself, nor my clients, I won't use the volunteer module. I use the organizations module. It has all of the same benefit, none of the baggage. Oh, this is how you align yourself. This is how you give back, blah, blah, blah. Paid or unpaid, it can all go here. Also, don't be distracted that I have a lot of dates here. This module does not require dates. I have dates here because I'm a public speaker and, and I have to show time relevance and all of that. So, so think about that. Look to the right here, what's circled in red. This is that same technique used one more time in a slightly different way. I did a, I was invited in to do a, a round table discussion at the NYU Wasserman Center, Career Center. And they said, hey, we'd like to have you come in. We're gonna have a moderator. We're gonna have a, a great evening. I'm like, yeah, I'm always game. Let's try it. Getting ready for it, of course. I, I'm looking up Vincent and, and, and Jessica and, and John Ladinsky and suddenly I get to John Ladinsky. I'm so jealous, so jealous. He has all these connections. You know, I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually shy and introverted, but um, I'm competitive. I still like to win. And I'm looking at John Ladinsky and I'm probably thinking something you're, different than you're thinking. I'm thinking not how do I get more connections than John Ladinsky. I'm thinking, how do I get John Ladinsky's connections? I already have mine. How do I get his? Same technique here. Understand that if you share accolades, share the spotlight, some of that's going to reflect back upon you. Anytime and while you watch them in center or Jessica or, or John or, or Vincent, you know, someone pops their names in, guess who comes up right next to that person based on how I told the story. Think about properly sharing some credit. 50 words or phrases all about you, keyword skills endorsement module. I know how hard it is to come up with 50 of these things. You need to come up with all 50, fill in all 50 spots. And then you got to work to get 100, and, 100 votes to each one that is really core to you before you're labeled 99 plus. 99 plus, wow, you must be solid. 100 people. All of the information you do put in will collect in various different ways at the bottom, uh, just like you see here. So. Yes, you are putting content in in multiple places, even though it can be redundant because you have multiple types of visitors. Let the system make that stuff accessible, be accessible. Let it organize it and truncate it where necessary. People can always expand all of this information. If some, if they're thirsty to know more about one of these pieces, you realize they can click on any one of them and they can just expand them. So we can have a lot of detail Every single piece of detail we put into our LinkedIn profile is keyword searchable by either a person or the machine. So, oh my gosh, let's keep that in mind. Perfect world, four or five or six written recommendations would be fantastic as well. I think I have 50 some uh, written recommendations up here on LinkedIn. Not a single edit, which is the key. Now, if you go and read some of mine, your head is going to want to explode because you're going to go, oh my gosh, <laughs> typos all over the place, grammar all over the place. Didn't John see this? Of course I did. <laughs> That's why they work. I learned that really as that recruiter on the occasion, I'd have to go do references. Uh, my gosh, you know, don't change their verbiage. Don't clean it up. Capture whatever comes out of their mouth, even though it's tangential, incomplete, all over the map. It's real. Capture it. It works. Same thing here. Not a single edit. Very, very powerful. Letting other people sell for you. Of course, uh, join some groups. There's a 
there's a, a self-recruiter group. I love that group. Every single group that you join, every member, once you're accepted, every member becomes part of your searchable pool. And, and better than it's the searchable piece as they share content or things that could be interesting or right for you or as you share content, really, that's what it's about. Things that could be right for them, it can land on their desktop now because you share the group even though you're not connected. So really important, flesh out your groups. Follow some important people. Look at that, I'm following Tony Robbins mostly so I can get behind him on stage, give him a little push. You know, get a little long in the tooth. He's got to make a little room for maybe a few others. Now, how do we get to those 500 connections? Let's be clear about this because this is very, very important. I don't care if you are at zero today. Seriously, if I'm interviewing you, I'm not interviewing you unless you have 500 plus connections. You're not the right caliber of person uh, in your career. You haven't really reached it. And yet I deal with a lot of people that are senior in their career. They have 130, 140, 170. Really? That's all you have? I mean, you can get that in days. <laughs> this is how people judge your credibility. Go to that unified search box at the top of the page. Begin to put each one of these things in in quotes. Invite me only pulls up people that have invite me, as long as it's in quotes, in their profile. All invites accepted. Pretty similar. Run down, invite every single person with no, no thought about it. Uh, open networker. Sounds a little strange. Whole thing in quotes. Run down, invite every single person. Lion. Well, the lion doesn't really need the quote. Single word. Either way, it's going to pull up mostly the good ones and some of them will need a little tweaking because it may be at food line or the line team of the real estate company most of them high volume networkers wherever you are in your process just understand to take the first step or the next step and repeat 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 this is a continual refinement process of your brand now let's show you before we wrap for today we do want to show you how to get to any decision maker uh this is how you reverse search linkedin once you create that list of 30 companies you want to go after, how do I get to the real decision makers? Go up to that same unified search box. You just saw it moments ago. Here we're searching Informatica, big database middleware company. Okay. So, uh, by the way, as you search, you're going to get this drop down menu. Don't click on the drop down menu. That's a trip down the rabbit hole. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, just hit enter and you're going to get this nice secondary sorting process. Now, I am here looking for the people at Informatica, but as long as I'm here, I'm here to brainstorm as well. There must be other companies. So I'm going to go find companies. Oh, there it is hidden over there. Go find companies. What do I get? 34,000 companies. Wow, what's going on here? Hmm. Well, after you get past the first couple dozen that are Informatica, 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 the rest are not Informatica. Who are these people? I can tell you. They're really all system integrators. They either resell or install Informatica software. If you're statistically right for working for Informatica, you are very likely statistically right working for a number of these organizations. But then, of course, we really have to find people. So we go back and go, no, no, show me the people. What do I get? Oh, 2.5 million. I can't, I, I, I can't get through that, especially on the free version. They're going to cut me off. Let me think here. Uh, it's brainstorming. It's problem solving. Uh, give me the ones in the U.S., I don't need the ones worldwide. So give me the ones in the U.S. And you know what? I don't need someone that worked for Informatica three years ago. I need the person that works there now, currently working for Informatica, currently in the U.S., 1,615 results. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas right here. There it is. But I can't look at 1,600 profiles either. I'm going to have to think a little bit more, even on the free version. I go in on the free version, and, and maybe it's a VP that I think is going to hire me. Really in the U.S., really, currently working for Informatica. Hmm, 75 VPs, a lot, of, a lot of chiefs in that company. Hmm, maybe it's a director, maybe it's a director. Director, really US, really Informatica. 228 directors, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, oh, I have it, I have it. You know why I have it? Because it's brainstorming. I'm here to problem solve, I'm here to learn to think. It's a sales director, that's what it is, a sales director. And not just in the US, how about right within New York City, even on the free version? Ah, look at that three. Now I have it. Three individuals. By the way, in this whole process of reverse searching, my goal is to find 25 to 30 people up, up, up the food chain, down, 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 all the way down to admin level, very strategic reasoning, left and right into a couple of departments, begin to open each one of those people that seem appropriate into a new tab. Along the way, I'm looking for the three to five right people. Those people I think would be somehow involved in the decision process, the discussion about me. I found three, but that's not as good as seeing five. If I saw five, my odds would get better. 
three people, pretty good odds, but five people, better odds. Uh, hmm, maybe it's a sales VP. Maybe there's a sales VP really in the uh, greater New York City area currently working. Ah, oh, look at this, two more. Now I'm up to five. Fantastic. As long as we're here, though, let's look off to the right and the connect. Oh, I love that. Love the connect. I just send the message I write one time ever. Copy and paste forevermore says, you don't know me. I'm professionally appropriate. Here's a little stroke to the ego, which sounds as simple as this. I like to connect with other professionals in our niche or niche, depending how we like to say that. Come and of course, I'd love to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. But then I see the send in mail, send in mail, send in mail. Please understand what in mail is first, which is spam. The literal definition of spam, it's paid email. Please do not send it. You may not think it's spam, but it is spam. Your target audience of HR recruiters or, or heavy duty decision makers, they're probably just like I am. I have well, well, well over a thousand unopened messages in my LinkedIn inbox, just clogged beyond belief with spam. Please don't send it. Oh, but I want to connect with Nick. Well, I'd like you to too. Load Nick's profile. You're going to get frustrated again, but click the dot, dot, dot. And my gosh, there it is. They just hit it over behind the book. I'll just push this connect button over here. They'll never find it. It's right there. Connect with them. Ah, there's that message you write one time ever. Copy and paste forevermore. You don't know me. Professionally appropriate. Here's that little stroke to the ego. Boom, boom, boom. Send it off to all 25 or 30. Don't wait for the answer. Show up behind the scenes, having looked at them. Show up in their inbox with the connect request, a multi-pronged marketing approach. And now those three, four, five individuals, I'm going to reach out to them by direct email, not in mail, by direct email, not brain surgery to get anybody's email in this world. I'm gonna, that's 99% of the people very quickly, two, three minutes. I'm going to email each one of these people as if they're the only person in the world. Dear Jack, dear Jim, dear Jill. I just had to reach out and introduce myself to you. I'm so excited by what I see going on at XYZ Company. <laughs> I saw that Wall Street Journal article on your new such and such launch. Oh, those things are always so good to get. You know, when I was with the ABC Company, all you have to do is have a carrot. Carrot, what's your carrot? You know, when I was at ABC Company, oh, I handled a very similar launch and then make a proposal. Gosh, I'd love to come in or I'd love to meet with you if we're not coming in during the pandemic. I'd love to meet with you where I can share more about how we tackled all those issues I bet your team's experiencing. Hmm, that sounds like it's valuable to me. It sounds like it'd be worth my time. And then you have to be brave enough to go for the jugular. I have an opening on my calendar, my calendar. My gosh, your words are very important. Opening on my calendar Tuesday at 10 a.m. One day, one time, never more. If you're open all next week, I am never going to meet with you. You are not valuable. <laughs> Your dance card's not full. Close that email. Setting expectations. Looking forward to a great discussion. The dash. <laughs> I guess this guy thinks he's going to meet with me. Yes, why wouldn't you meet with me unless you are a crazy person or you're really not qualified for your own job? And if you're crazy, I don't want to work for you. If you're not qualified for your own job, I really don't want to work for you either. Brings us to the end of today's lecture, building your professional network with LinkedIn and how to use it for your job search. Tune in next week for the career evolution lecture. That is really the part two to this. Once you begin to work on staging your story on LinkedIn, putting the right visuals in there, elevating your brand, how do we then take that as a marketing tool, put together a marketing campaign that doesn't consume our time that we can manage in just two minutes per day? Anybody can manage an effective social media job search campaign in just two minutes per day. And that's our next lecture coming up next week. If you need help on your, your resume, you need help on your LinkedIn profile, lifting your brand, understanding how to navigate uh, what may be happening to us in the interview process. If we're not quite getting the interviews or we're not quite getting to the offer stage, I think you know where to reach me. Check out all my services under the services tab on selfrecruiter.com and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Take care.